Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'd like to show you more work I've done on my Aero Tetris Horton HO229 or HO229. But before I show you that, I'd like to actually talk about the actual Horton HO229. The HO229 was designed by Remmer and Walter Horton. It was designed and being built towards the end of World War II. Aircraft of that time frame, uh, towards the end of World War II, they had to be able to carry a payload of a thousand kilos, be able to fly a thousand kilometers, and also be able to fly a thousand kilometers per hour. The HO229 met these requirements, so it was giving the approval to go ahead and be built. The wingspan of the HO229 was roughly 55 feet with a length of about 25 feet. Now, unfortunately, towards the end of the war, this plane was built and only very few, maybe one or two, were built, and the one that actually flew only had two flights and it crashed on its second flight. And then um, as time went on, later that year, the war had ended. So would this plane have changed anything for World War II? I don't know. Some people predicted if this plane had been mass produced that it could have turned the tides of the war, but um, do we know that? Well, we'll never know. Some people claimed this was Germany's first stealth aircraft. Now, as far as being stealth, I don't, mm, I don't know about that, but um, I do know at the time that the British were experimenting with radar and was using radar to detect airplanes coming across the English Channel before they would get to um, England. But Germany did not know this, so as far as the plane being stealth, I think that is just pure coincidence through the shape of the wing itself. Some people even claim that there was charcoal in the paint or even in the glue to absorb the radar. But if the Germans didn't know about radar, how would they have incorporated that into there with um, charcoal and stuff like that? And I have read and heard some reports that um, the paint and some of the glue has been analyzed and that it doesn't show any charcoal in there. I think that's just a, um, a far-fetched tale all. Some years ago, I did watch a TV program where um, north of Grumman, they made a replica of the HO229. And once they finished building it, they actually built it of the material that the actual plane was built out of. And they took it out to the radar range to test it to see how um, stealthy it was. Now, I don't know. I've seen some shows that said um, they stretched the truth a little. And some shows say, you know, it's true. But... From the TV show, they claimed that um, it did have, the Hill 229 did have some stealth capability. And as far as um, being able to detect it, the plane would have gotten closer to England and um, could have did more damage um, to England throughout um, with the bombing attacks that they did if the plane could actually get closer to England. But could it get closer to England? Um, I don't know. I mean, the TV shows that they show, you have to take those with a grain of salt at times, and um, sometimes things are just stretched a bit, so I don't know. But anyway, some people claim, also claim that this particular HO-229, that the B-2 bomber um, is based off the, um, the HO-229. Now, I don't believe that either because... Um, Jack Northrup had been designing flying wings before the Horton brothers, but the shape of the B-2 and Horton, they do look similar, but um, coincidence? I don't know. But like I said before, Jack Northrup had been experimenting with flying wings before um, the HO-229 even um, came out, so um, who knows. But Again, could this plane have changed the tides of the war? We won't know. 
And um, was it the predecessor to the B2? Possibly, just from the shapes of it, because technology today is so much more advanced and in um, testing and everything what they do. And the um, as far as being non-detectable stealth itself, with the engines intakes on the Ho 229 being right up front like they are, you would think the radar would pick up those um, quite easily. So again, I still take that it being stealth as a grain of salt from when they tested it. So mm, who knows? But um, again, the plane was ahead of its time. And um, so, yeah, so I give it off to the Horton brothers for coming up with that design. Here is one of the wings to the Aero Tetris Ho 229 that I'm building. And um, it's all foam. And this is covered with um, fiberglass and primer. And then I'm sanding this down to get the smooth surface on here. And what I've done also is right here, I made this um, light plywood um, former here put in here and also I made another one that's on the inside of here also it goes from here then there will be a wing tube sleeve that I made also which is here wing tube sleeve which goes into here and this will be cut um, on the side right here and then the actual wing tube will go in here and then sit into the main fuselage. And this is aluminum tubing. And this sleeve here, the wing sleeve, is just made of fiberglass. And on the bottom here, I still have to glass the bottom here and start on it. But on the bottom here, um, then the servo for this will go in here like that. And then we'll have the aileron back here. Here is the center section of the Aero Tetris um, 229. And again, this is all foam, bunch of pieces put together. And then this is glass with fiberglass top and resin. And we have this, as you can see. And again, I did the same thing for the end over there. It's just a um, light ply um, glued on there. And there's another one in here um, closer up here. There's a hole over there. And then the wing sleeve, um, wing sleeve again will go in there and be cut in the other wing the wing will go on there and the same thing on this side and this will be powered by um, two 90 millimeter EDF uh, motors and so here we have it's quite large this will be a 3.1 meter wingspan very nice design Well, that's going to do it for this video, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button as well. And I invite you to join my Facebook group and my Patreon site. Both are called Cat Bill Fly RC. A lot of information over there, a lot of good people too. If you need any help, just go ahead and ask. If you need any help, got any questions on anything, what I'm doing on my channel, go ahead and leave a, uh, a message down in the comments. Go ahead and email me or contact me on the Facebook group or my Patreon site. So it's going to do it for this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Subscribe for more.